Hey guys, coming at you with another video. I mentioned this in one of my previous videos talking about FDM printing miniatures and this time we're going to start looking at vehicles and the one vehicle we're going to start off with is a Dreadnought. Um, so for Christmas I had actually gotten a Brutalis Dreadnought and then uh, but I wanted more. I wanted another one. I had one for, I wanted one for my uh, Space Wolves army and then I wanted one for my te Black Templars army. So the Games Workshop one is going to be my space for my Space Wolves, and then the FDM printed one is going to be for my Black Templars. So I went ahead and started printing the FDM parts since I already had the GW parts. And the first file I used, I kept getting failures. Um, stuff wasn't sticking to the bed. Um, I, I just had a lot of issues. Um, and, and some of them were, were, were bigger failures, as you can see here. Um, not really sure if it was my filament or not. I changed the filament out a little bit later, um, but I just wasn't happy with how the first files came out. The shoulder pads look nice. I, I could sand those down probably and they'd look pretty good. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of parts that just didn't come out well. Um, and I do think it was the file I was using. I tried to get a file that had a, some of the bigger parts like, uh, like this big chest plate, uh, or body part torso, uh, all together. But at the end of the day, I, I had to go back to the drawing board. So the first tip here is to make sure that you're using good files. Um, so my second set of files um, took some tweaking, but turned out way better. Um, didn't have any nearly as many fails. Uh, did end up printing some parts twice, but that was more just to reorient them so that there was less uh, layer lines and or support uh, material left over, support or blemishes where the supports were taken off um and that helped a lot and and, and sometimes you have to do that with, with those files um so you do get some areas where again the supports come off i ended up just sanding these down using a scalpel to kind of shave them back um just to kind of get all those parts and get them nice and clean but when they do come off they are going to be a little bit dirty or a little bit messy so my next piece of advice is also to do multiple plates. Don't try to fit this all on one plate and it'll turn out much nicer. So now I had all the parts that I needed to FDM printed and I can jump into building the GW Brutalis. So overall, the construction or the building was pretty straightforward. The, as always, the GW instructions are really good. Um, just kind of follow those and then, I mean, there is a, a certain order that you should be doing it in but you know um, there does some there is some customizability but I would say that it's a little bit restricted so um, just go slow take your time clean up the parts um, and, and, and it'll go smoothly um, I do think there's uh, or there definitely was a lot more parts with the Brutalis from Games Workshop than there was the FTM printed one so that's kind of nice that it took me way less time, I think, to produce or to make the FDM one than it did to make this Brutalis. Um, but I also kind of took my time and I then uh, made sure that I was comparing too. So I, I got to a first stage, which was just like kind of that main torso piece. And then I jumped over to the... Um, uh, FDM mini and started building that so that I can kind of get to the same point and then compare it uh, from that point. And I will say this, the FDM mini was actually really easy to put together. Um, I didn't need instructions. It was nice to have the GW Brutalis to reference so that I knew, you know, where parts would go and what it was supposed to look like, or at least close to it. Um, but this, this, these files are really good. Um, I, unfortunately, I'm not going to, I'm not going to share the files with you, um, or I'm not going to link them because I don't want anybody to get in trouble. Um, but they are out there. I'm, I'm, you can you can find these um, on the normal the normal websites that you could find STLs, um, and and you shouldn't have trouble finding them. But again, a lot of them kind of fit together too, so they snap in kind of like those side pieces there. I did end up gluing them too, obviously, but some of them were were snapped in real nice and. Uh, you really didn't even need glue. You could you could just kind of push fit them together, 
which was really nice and, and helped a lot with the assembly to kind of understand where the parts would go and do some mock-ups and test fitting before you before I glued them down and, and they were in their final resting place. So as I mentioned before, uh, one of these is going to be for Space Wolves, and then this one's going to be for Black Templar. So I had a resin piece that I bought uh, pre-printed, or obviously uh, that had some some Black Templar pieces that I'm going to be putting on this Brutalis uh, for my Black Templar's army. Didn't really fit in or, or at least uh, um, stick on there or push on there. So uh, just for comparison's sake, I kind of took it off because it just, it just was loose and, and coming off there, but... Um, now I'm at the point where I can compare the two, and honestly, I think uh, I think they both look really good, uh, and and they, they kind of have a their own little flair to them. Uh, the FDM one had more like ridges or like uh, armor uh, edging, um, which again, if I if I was doing what I'm doing to the GW one with my space holds, I, again I have some resin parts that I'm going to use to convert that, but. Uh, they look pretty good, and honestly, they're, they're, I wouldn't say they're hard to tell apart or easy to tell apart, but um, I'm interested to see what they see, what they look like once I get them all completed. But as far as the torsos go, uh, the melted guns in the front look a little different, um, but honestly, everything else looks pretty similar. Um, I would say the GW one has a little bit more detail um, and sharp detail, uh, but uh, honestly, I was pretty happy with where I was at this point. So let's keep moving and uh, we'll next do the legs. So the first part of the legs is the groin or hip area. And the GW one had a lot more parts than the FDM ones. The FDM ones I think was only three parts. Um, I will say this was one of the areas that I think the FDM print struggled a little bit. Uh, if you look at where kind of those leg gears or joints are, um, there's a lot of, uh, I got a lot of support material in there that was not so great, but, um, but again, putting these up and then putting them next to each other, about the same size, um, pretty similar looking. Um, and then I think the detail with them is, is pretty good as well. Um, so let's move on to the next part, which is more of like the legs and the posing. Um, I'm not going to lie. I was not super happy with the posing. Uh, I ended up cutting those little like uh, stubby things on the underside of the groin there. Um, I just couldn't get it to make the like stepping motion that I really was looking for. Um, I was using some blue tack to try to, you know, mock everything up and make it look cool, but I really struggled. Um, even with the GW model, um, I think the FDM was a little bit easier again, cause it was more, it was less pieces. So it was less to, to kind of deal with, but, um, I had to modify some of the, the Brutalis on the, the, for the GW one, uh, cut off some pieces and, and, uh, and then I used some glue and, uh, kind of had to hold it together. But, um, I will say that was one piece that was a little, just, it was, it was frustrating for sure, um, to try to do. And I, I remember running into this too, when I, uh, when I built the Redemptor. Um, but again, I, I was just kind of looking for a simple, uh, a simple little thing. And so here's, here's yeah, so here's where, I'm cutting off those tabs on the bottom uh, and I cleaned it up. Uh, again, I was just got frustrated with those. Um, and I think they ended up, that, that ended up helping me in the end getting that pose that I wanted. So the legs for the FDM printed model were pretty easy again, uh, are pretty intuitive, I would say, to uh, put together. Uh, really, there's, there's only one way that they can go together. And these also did a little bit of a snap fit. Uh, I think, uh, it, the fitment wasn't super great. Some of the gaps were a little bit bigger than I was hoping they would be. But overall, I was pretty happy with, again, how they snapped together and, um, and went together. But again, I, I was able to mock them up a little bit. Um, did have to make some like trimming and measurement, or uh, not measurements, but trimming and, and adjustments to allow them to kind of fit better together um, and get some, some better clearances. But overall, I was pretty happy and um, can't really complain. But Again, I think the level of detail is there, um, and they're they're slightly different, right? So they they can't be exactly like the Games Workshop ones. Um, so I was pretty happy with it. 
And again, now looking at the, the actual legs, um, I haven't finished posing both of them, but I had them pretty much uh, figured out. Uh, I ended up using the feet for the FDM from the original file just because I liked the, that style better and I think they turned out better. Um, but again, looking at them here, I, they definitely both look like dreadnoughts and they both look like uh, they fit together or could fit in the same army. Um, and I think it makes it a little bit unique too. I like that about it too, that uh, the one for my Black Templars isn't going to necessarily look exactly like the one for my Space Wolves. Um, again, you can see some of that panel fitment that I wasn't super happy with, but um, the FDM one, I was, I was overall happy with it. I think the legs turned out really well. Um, and so here's them put together completely. Uh, I think you can see, uh, again, I'm pointing out some of my Black Templar pieces. I, and then one part that I swear I recorded, but I can't find the footage for is um, the arm. I ended up reprinting part of the arm. And then I ended up using actually an extra, you get an extra like fingers and then a gauntlet uh, modification in the GW uh, kit. And so I ended up using that on these, uh, which I think is cool because it, it kind of melds those two parts together or those two types of parts together and um, makes it, them look a little bit more, um, again, uh, like fitting for, for each other or, or um, sisters or brothers or whatever you want to call them. Um, went with the claws on the GW model. Uh, didn't end up finding files that I liked for claws for the, the FDM one. But I think, again, the, the FDM one's going to be for my Black Templars, and then the Claw one is going to be for my Space Wolves. So I think it ended up working out really well. And then I had don't have a bunch of spare Brutalis parts that I can never use again. So I ended up using more of those parts, which I think was really nice. Again, fitting up that, I had to put some green stuff in there so the hatch fit a little bit better with that, that, uh, that resin printed one that I got. And here they are primed. Um, I ended up uh, putting those conversion bits on there uh, off camera and then I took them out and I uh, I painted them up and honestly I think the painting um, adding some of those sorry that the I had some trouble good with my camera focusing so I apologize for that um, hopefully hopefully you guys get the picture and um, if I if you need to I can take some better pictures or, or do another video on this too so just let me know but I think the lines um, they were hidden or they got hidden by some of the paint and then also some of those conversion bits helped a lot, helped out a lot. But then once you get everything painted, um, they, they, they kind of become invisible. Unless you're looking for them, you're really not going to find them necessarily. I think you'll, um, and you'll be happy with it. Uh, again, that's one of the resin shoulder pad pieces that I got. Uh, there's me trying to, again, focus the camera, but for some reason it was not, uh, not working for me, but that's okay. Because again, I think you get the picture and you can kind of see it now that it, now that they're all uh, painted up. The resin line or the FDM lines uh, really, I don't think, make a difference or make a big impact on it. Uh, I think they both still looked really, ended up looking really nice. So here we are, final side by side. Again, I think they turned out really good, especially once I added those conversion parts. You really can't tell the difference between them. Um, so I think what I'm going to do here is uh, I will paint these guys up eventually. If you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments. Um, but I think the next part is I'm going to start looking at some other vehicles, maybe printing a Land Raider, possibly. Then I also have some conversions that are going to come out soon. So like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.